Hello everybody and thanks for joining me. Today I'm tying a classic dry fly pattern, the Goddard Caddis. The hook is a size 12 barbless dry fly hook from Partridge. I'll tie this from size 12 down to about size 16 or so. And I'm using two threads, 50 denier GSP for the deer hair body, and then up at the head end, UTC 70 in black. The deer hair that I'll be using here is just standard roe deer. It's got a nice straight fibre and it spins and packs nicely. Whenever I'm shaping deer hair, I like to have one of these razor blade holders on hand. This one's from Stonfo, really very useful when you're doing muddler heads and deer hair bodies like this. For the antennae, I'm using some hackle stem. This is a rather tattered old black cock cape that I've got, but it works perfectly for that. And then the hackle, this is a nice whiting saddle in natural brown. Now I'm very lucky in that I've got hold of one of John Goddard's original books, and this is actually from his own library. Sadly, John Goddard died a few years ago, and I never got to see, see him speak in person, but he's left a little surprise for the owner of this book, in that he's put four of his own flies in, and these, as, as you can see from the label, some of his best patterns. And down there in the bottom right is an original Goddard caddis tied by John Goddard himself. And that's, of course, what I've based mine on here. Hopefully, despite that one being a little bit squished, I can do it some justice. So I've started off my thread a few millimetres back from the hook eye, and that's to define the length of my deer hair body. Otherwise it's quite easy to get overexcited with the deer hair and run out of room for your hackles. Here I'm putting in a whip finish at the back of the body, and what this is for is to stop that thread from slipping forwards or backwards whilst I'm spinning and packing my deer hair. This way it defines the end of the body and stops any, any of that hair going around the bend of the hook. Here's my first pinch of deer hair. I've tied it in with the butts facing backwards and that's going to help to form the overhanging body of the fly, making a couple of loose wraps over the top, pulling down tight to flare the hair and then letting it spin around the hook shank. Now you'll see the perpetual problem when you're tying deer hair bodies like this is that it doesn't want to spin around the bend of the hook. So I'm going to take the opportunity now just using a blunt dubbing needle, teasing out that hair so it's all lying properly and I can pack everything down neatly later. I'm going to be tying in about three pinches of deer hair for this length of body. Again, I'm making really sure that I've cleaned out all of the fibres and the fuzzy underfur from underneath so that it flares and it spins nicely. You can see as I'm wrapping forward here, it's spinning around, making a nice bushy body in all directions. That's going to give me plenty of meat to carve into later. Again, making a couple of loops around the hook shank to secure that down and stop it spinning any further. And coming in with my final pinch, as you see, I tied the first pinch in with the butts facing backwards. Here I'm tying it in with the butts facing forwards, and that's just to try and get a slightly more consistent colour on the finished fly. Now, nearly lost it there. My hook wasn't quite secure in the vise, so as I was trying to pack it back with my fingernails, it nearly came out, but managed to rescue it. Again, a couple of turns to lock everything off, and at this point I'm going to whip finish. I'm done with my GSP thread. It's done its purpose with the deer hair, and... You might have noticed that I've not tied in the antennae or the hackle yet. When I'm tying these, I think it's much easier to do those after you've finished shaping the deer hair body. That way I can get the hackle right the way back to the body, and I'm not worried about cutting off the antennae when I'm, when I'm carving into the deer hair. Now, in slightly high speed, I'm going to brush out all of those deer hair fibres, make sure they're all pointing perpendicularly to the hook shank, and again, taking special care to tease out anything that got caught around the hook bend. Coming in with my scissors first, just knocking off those highest and longest bits of deer hair. I'm going to gradually spend a bit of time, a few minutes, tapering it down to make a nice slightly cone-shaped body, a little bit thinner at the head end, a little bit thicker over the tail, and leaving it slightly long, tapering over the end of the back of the hook. Here I'm using my razor blade holder just to smooth everything out. I've taken it down a little bit further underneath the hook shank, so it leaves the gape of the hook free. Once I've got my body carved to my liking, I'm going to cast on with my next thread, which is the black UTC 70, make a few turns, and then here I've taken two lengths of hackle stem. And these are just normal feathers that have got had the barb stripped off. I'm tying these in from the hook eye backwards, and I'm trying to orient it so that the natural curve of the feather stem is pointing slightly upwards. I'm happy with that, so with those secured, I'm going to come in with my scissors and trim off the excess stem. 
You can get three or four different sizes of fly out of each feather, so don't go throwing away the excess. Here's my hackle. I've stripped all the barbs off one side because I want to keep this quite a neat and a comparatively sparse hackle up at the head end. I don't think that this adds much to the actual flotation power of the fly, but it certainly adds to the movement that it makes in the water. That big buoyant deer hair body does plenty of, plenty of work in keeping the fly afloat all on its own. Got away from me a little bit there, but I'm just going to keep wrapping forwards. Nice touching turns, building up a little bit of a hackle at the head end. I'm taking this all the way from the body. You can see it's packed in nicely. No big divot or gap there. All the way up to the tie-in point of my antennae. And get one more wrap in there. I'm going to make a couple of loops over the top with my thread. Secure everything down. And then lifting up the hackle and the antennae, I'm going to make a couple of turns around the base of the hook eye, and then whip finish. I love fishing these patterns. Caddis hatches can be really, really exciting times to fish, and having a big buoyant pattern like this really lets you skate it across the top of the water and you can get some great strikes. Here's a view of the finished fly. You can see we've got that slight taper to the body. You can tie them skinnier, you can tie them fatter. Like I say, I based mine off the original as tied by the man himself in his book, so here's this interpretation. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.